All right, tech family, it is the fourth birthday of this channel and I've, or should I say we've, got something super special for you. Today, myself and my fellow laptop reviewers are going to battle it out to find the absolute best laptop that you can buy for 400 US dollars. I've received tons of comments over the last couple of years that the laptops that we review are expensive and really only for wealthy people. Well, today, we're gonna right that ship. Not only are we on a mission to find the best laptop for $400, but this time, second-hand laptops are allowed. And so is upgrading and modifying the laptop. In fact, not only is it allowed, but it's recommended. You heard me right. Three laptop experts are going head-to-head -to, -head to find you the best laptop that you can buy for $400. Let me start by introducing the competitors. Competing against me today is Jared from Jared's Tech. Jared is your expert in gaming laptops. His hobbies include knitting and of course, line dancing. Up next is Andrew from Andrew Mark David. Andrew covers an enormous variety of laptops on his channel. His hobbies include lawn balls and collecting Pomeranians. Before we run out in search of insane laptop deals, which I'm super pumped about, we have to come up with a way of scoring these laptops so we can declare a winner. So I've invented a simple scoring method, which I've affectionately named the JJ score. Let me show it to you on screen. I have given equal weight to laptops performance as well as creature comforts. In the performance section, you'll see that we will be ranking each laptop by its Geekbench multi-core score, Cinebench single and multi-core score, and for graphics, Time Spy score. The top performing laptop in each of these will get three points. The next two and the slowest in each will get no points. By awarding no points to the last place in each of these, it should incentivize us to find high performing machines. Then, to round out the performance section, one point will be awarded for the fans not being audible in everyday tasks, and another if the palm rest and keyboard deck are kept cool under load. Switching to creature comforts, the things that make your laptop enjoyable to use. We're allocating a max of three points if the screen is a high quality one. Then a point each to the keyboard and trackpad if they're comfortable, using the Honor system of course. For ports, if the laptop has at least two unique ports of USB-A, C, HDMI, SD card, it will get a point. And if it has at least three unique ports, that is, it'll get two points. Then you've got a point for having a biometric login like a fingerprint reader and a point for having a decent webcam in the right position. A point is awarded if speakers can hit above 80 decibels. And then for portability, you've got two points if the laptop is lightweight, less than four pounds, and one extra point if it is less than three pounds, super lightweight. Obviously, I've missed a couple of things like battery life, but after the three of us met, we kind of felt that that would be a tough one given that we may be buying secondhand laptops. You see, battery life, it tends to degrade after a lot of use, so you don't really know what you're getting yourself into when you're buying it. Well, it's time to doll out the money and send each of us on our way. Jared, Andrew, let the games begin. I think first we've got to do some market research. So on eBay, you can actually sort by sold and completed items. So let's see what things have sold for. Okay, looks like an Omen sold for $500, although that's with a quad core 6700HQ, probably a low end GPU. Uh, looks like a tough F15, so 10th gen, so quad core CPU, uh, exactly $600. What was the GPU there? Uh, 1650. Okay, so maybe 1650 graphics is just what we're gonna see at this price point. So straight away, I knew I would buy a secondhand laptop, not a new laptop. I have tried buying new laptops before in this price range. I've even reviewed some on the channel. I think there was a Chewy, there was a laptop I reviewed that it was $100. And I know that row of laptops that you see at Best Buy that are all in this price range under 400, and they're just not great. You know, the screens are often very washed out, the trackpads are not that accurate, and the processes are very, very slow. So I really feel I can get a better deal buying secondhand. Okay, gentlemen, challenge accepted. Now, I went about finding the laptop in a few different places. And like you, Josh, I checked Best Buy's $400 and under section. Of course, that turned out to be a dead end. There was a few leads, but nothing promising. So I turned to Craigslist, where there were a couple of promising leads, although those turned out to be dead ends as well, when a couple of the units that were for sale actually turned out to be different units than they actually were purported to be, or they just weren't the condition that I thought they were going to be in. Uh, it's not looking great out there, is it? Okay, an Alienware for 510. Looks pretty good based on the picture, but what about the specs? Oh, that is an ancient sticker. It's got a Vista sticker. All right, I'm out. 
Now, when buying a secondhand laptop, I'd much prefer to buy it from a reputable manufacturer or a big chain. The reason is, if I buy one like that, and this is generally a return laptop, someone who didn't like it and has returned it for some reason, is they have a return policy themselves. So if I get it and there is something materially wrong with the laptop or I don't like it, I can return it. And two, there's a manufacturer's warranty on it. So if there is something wrong with it, after that return period, I have some recourse. And three, if you are buying it for business like I am, you'll get a receipt. So potentially at tax time, you can do something with it. So with Best Buy and Craigslist turning out to be a dead end, I turned my attention to eBay. Yes, I'm not the biggest fan of eBay. I've bought many things from eBay in the past. So I look for a laptop with a discrete GPU, a numeric keypad to crunch numbers in case I need to do some work. And of course, I wanted it to have a 15 inch display. So it's the best of both worlds in having to be able to do gaming, working on it and of course doing some video editing, light video editing. I'm not expecting it to be gangbusters in terms of the performance, but I need it to be functional, especially under $400. Again, you have to temper your expectations. I've got a search in currently for 500 to $600. So my max budget is 600 Australian dollars, which is about 400 US dollars. And I put 500 in as a minimum because a lot of these will start off as an auction. So the price will start lower and then it'll go up over time. For 600 Australian dollars, we're gonna be struggling to get a 1660 Ti GPU, maybe a 2060. Some people got that for a little above 600 on auction. Yeah, an RTX 3050 within my budget, that definitely looks better than those 1650s that we've been seeing. So I think it is possible that we could snag a nice deal if we're lucky. We just need to keep an eye out. So with me here, I have Dell's outlet store open on screen and I'm kind of just scrolling through to see what's available. Now I've reverse sorted by price and straight away we're seeing laptops here. These are Inspiron 3000s, which is the lowest end of the Dell range. And you know, these, these Pentium processors, they're just not that good. They're really slow, far slower than like an i5, i7, even from a couple of generations ago from Intel that is. And as we scroll down, you know, the best laptop I can see here under 400, this is 402, is this AMD Ryzen 5 5625U processor. And that's a good processor, but when I look through this laptop here, I mean, this is, I, 250 nit screen, you know, not that bright. I'm certain I can get better second hand. All right, what do we have here? This looks like a beefy Asus laptop, but I haven't seen a design like that in a long time. So I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty old. 4700 HQ. So when I started reviewing laptops, seventh gen was out. So we had the 7700 HQ and 7700M, no, that's, yeah, this is just another case of someone who had an expensive laptop like eight plus years ago or something like that and they just think that it's gonna hold its value and resell, but it won't because it's essentially useless for gaming. Switching over to Best Buy's outlet store, now I've set the max price to $400, I'm just not seeing all that much. You know, here's a Qualcomm processor, nothing really, you know, this is a, a seventh gen Intel processor, we're up to 13th gen, so this is uh, six years ago. Not that good. Um, not seeing anything that's jumping out at me here. The best thing I actually saw, which I almost could afford, I'm gonna bring it up on screen. Um, this Asus ZenBook 14 that I actually reviewed, I think last year on the channel, it's a pretty good laptop and it's on sale for $499. And you can see down here for $424, you can buy an open box one of it. That would have been perfect. And you know, that kind of got me thinking that what I should do is knowing the laptops that are super, super good, kind of like a big step up from those laptops that came before it, these are the ones that I probably should be searching for when I go out to Craigslist and eBay. All right, so in Australia, we also have Gumtree, which is kind of like Craigslist in America. We do have that here too, but it's not really as popular. This Nitro 5 already looks better than the stuff we've seen on eBay. That's a six core uh, 11th gen CPU and RTX 3050 Ti graphics. So not bad at all considering we've only seen GTX 1650 laptops at this point. Now be super careful guys shopping secondhand. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. I mean, here's a MacBook Air. This is an M2 version from 2022. Insanely good laptop for $300. This is on Facebook Marketplace. There's no way this is real. And when I click on the person to see who's selling this, you can see the fella here. He, he's living in Pakistan, okay? I'm in the New York City area. The chances of this being real, it's probably a scam. You know, keep your eyes and ears open here. As I said, if it looks too good to be true, probably is. 
All right, so it's a few days later and that Nitro with the 3050 Ti unfortunately sold basically right after I stopped the recording. So I missed out on that 11800H, which would have been great, though it did only have a 3050 Ti, so not super amazing for games. Now I did actually find another Nitro, which I think was cheaper, 500 Australian dollars, which is like 340 US. And this one has an RTX 3060. Now, I don't think the CPU was anywhere near as good. Yeah, so it's a quad-core i5-10300H. I'd probably be sacrificing any chance I have at winning the competition overall, but at the same time, it might actually be the best in terms of just raw gaming performance. Oh, they do mention that the battery stopped working a few months ago, so they have to leave it plugged into power. Uh, I mean, this is actually $100 under my budget, so potentially, if the problem is the battery, I might be able to buy a replacement. Alright, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna reach out to this guy and see if the Nitro is still available. So, I literally just sent that message and stopped the screen recording, and they already replied within a minute saying that it's unavailable. The laptop was only up for, like, just over a day. I think it was two days ago, so yeah, you've really gotta move fast on this stuff. Now, talking about marquee devices, the obvious marquee device from the last couple of years was probably the MacBook Air with M1. That's when Apple introduced those M series of processors and that was just such a breakthrough device. It was so much better than anything that came before it, particularly in the you know everyday casual user space. I'm not referring to gamers here. So let's see what these laptops go for. $900 for a new one that is on a small sale. I have seen them go as low as $800 on a really big sale. But I highly doubt I'm gonna be able to buy this excellent laptop for $400, even second hand. Let's take a look at Craigslist anyway. So we've got $650 for that one. I would try it, but that's really far away. So I'm not gonna be able to pick it up. This one, $1,100 for a 16 gig of RAM model, 900, 900, some of these ones are new ones, 750, 600, 850, 750. You guys get the picture, but you know what? I'm gonna send out a couple of asks, a couple of low balls. I'm gonna ask super nicely, explain it's going to a good home if I get it, because obviously I'm gonna donate it afterwards and just see, you know, who knows, maybe someone accepts. All right, so I went through a lot of different avenues and trying to secure a unit to enter into this competition. So I wound up going to eBay and this is what I have found so far. Let's take a look at it right here. And as you can see, I found one for $397. It's the Asus GL502V gaming laptop. It's got a Core i7 in it. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM. Don't know how the condition's going to be. So let's order it. And I will be right back with the unit once it does come in. I think my best option at the moment is back to this G5 and hoping they'll do it for $600 and ship it, which seems very unlikely as they haven't listed shipping. So maybe I'll try that. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. I just heard back from this one, the MacBook Air M1. They originally asked 550. I did lowball them with 400. They wanted 450. I tried, I explained it's going to a good home and they accepted. I'm gonna get a MacBook Air M1 for $400 with just some cosmetic defects. That is insane. I bet Andrew and Jarrett, they're gonna to struggle to compete with this one. Well, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on because you won't wanna miss the epic conclusion. Will our laptops actually be what we thought we bought? Will Jarrett or Andrew take the win with their high powered gaming laptops? Or will I steal it with my all round good one? Let us know in the comments below. Anyway, till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I, actually we in this case, will catch you later.